What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics. And up next, we are going to be going over the big Bronze Age keys that are part of this upcoming Heritage Signature Auction. Some cool books. We're going to talk about these books, price them out, then maybe we'll see what they go for later this week. Let's check these out. Right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So I have made videos on the modern, the copper and modern books and the silver age books that are part of this upcoming heritage auction. I thought it would also be fun to talk about the bronze age books. There are some big bronze age keys out there that are in this auction. Now, I mean, maybe this will be a little It'll be interesting to see what these do because we've got all this speculation going on now about the the nine nines. Are they going to be flooded into the market after that nine nine giant size X Men one? Is that going to have impacts on the prices of the nine eights? I doubt it at this stage. I, I really doubt it's going to have any real measurable impact at this stage. But we'll have to see after the books all come up for sale later on this week. So if you aren't aware, Heritage has these big signature auctions or platinum auctions. Usually about every, it seems like about every six to eight weeks, somewhere in that range. And this one has this Action Comics number one, the 8.5, the book that is likely going to be the most expensive comic book that has ever sold when this auction finishes. But that's not what we're going to talk about here today. We are here to talk about the Bronze Age books. So here we've got all the books ordered from highest price to lowest price. Over on the left-hand side here, we can filter on the era of the book. And so for Bronze Age, they classify that as 1970 to 1979. I know other people like myself go up to 1984 for the Bronze Age, but with the heritage filters, this is what we're doing. So we're going 1970 to 1979. Now we are not going to be talking about all these books. because so as you can see over here, there are 59 books. That would be a very, very long video, but we're going to pick out some of the interesting ones to talk about here. So the first one up here. I mean, obviously, it's not a big surprise that this is right now the most expensive Bronze Age book that is in this auction. We have a 98 Hulk 181. So let's take a closer look at this book. Right now, it is sitting at a bid of 45,000. But if you aren't aware, with Heritage, they have a 20% buyer's premium. The numbers that are ultimately reported to GPA, Go Collect, Cover Price, all those places are the final price, which is the bid plus the buyer's premium. I know a lot of people get really hung up on that buyer's premium. It doesn't mean really anything. It's just don't even consider the bid. That's how I approach Heritage. I don't even think about the bid. I just think about the total number at the end, which is the bid plus the buyer's premium. Everybody that's bidding knows that it's there. I mean, occasionally people forget you know, and they bid and then they get the buyer's premium added on and they forget. But generally, everybody knows that the buyer's premium is there. Heritage is very clear about it when you're bidding. It shows it on the screen when you're bidding. And so you generally just know that you are bidding that total number there. So just something, you know, because I know a lot of people get really, really hung up on that buyer's premium and I don't really understand why. That's just where Heritage is making their money. You know, they have to make a profit somehow. Whether they didn't show a buyer's premium and they took out a 20% fee after the fact, or they show it to you up front, it doesn't really matter. Like it's, they're going to make their money one way or the other. They're not going to sell it and not make money. Right. So I just don't get hung up on that buyer's premium. But okay. All right. Let's, let's check out this book. So we got this 9 8. It's a white pages, Hulk 181. It was a pretty square book. You know, one of the, from this era, this Marvel Comics group banner up at the top can always cause some issues with just the appearance of the book. Now, this one is a little, has the wrap that's, off a little bit, kind of like a miswrap. And so it's a little harder to see flaws on this book because the back cover is white. And so you won't actually see really many of the spine ticks or anything if they're there. It's like, maybe there's something going on there. But in general, it's going to look really clean. I mean, even if there was a spine tick, it would be very, very difficult to see it. But there's really nothing notable. There's this little bindery tear down at the bottom corner here. Uh, then if we go over, you know, along the edge, nothing really jumps out, maybe like a little soft corner there. But overall, so far, this is a very, very nice looking book. I mean, no reason to think that this isn't a nine eight. I know a lot of people get really hung up on the grades and stuff. So I like to talk about it. I like to, I like to show, you know, this kind of thing. And to me, this this looks like a very solid nine point eight. 
nine eight white pages. I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe the nine nine pre screen maybe can get there, but probably not because of this. Uh, like in theory, this bindery tear, this should keep it out of a nine nine. Like no question. Like it shouldn't even be a question. But I mean, who knows right now <laughs> with what's going on? But all right, so. This book right now is sitting at 54,000. There was a 9.8 white pages that sold on Comic Link like a week ago for 61,000. That was actually one of the lower sales, not the lowest sale that we've had since the prices have started correcting. The lowest sale is actually this one right here, 56,925. We did have a $72,000 sale on Heritage earlier this year for 9.8 white pages as well. It's a different copy, it's got a different. Uh, uh, serial number there. So what do I think this one's going to go for? I, I mean, this is a book that, I mean, I, I'm I'm not going to try to account for whatever's going to happen post this 9-9 stuff, like whatever's going on there. But based on what I'm seeing right now, to me, the book still seems to be trending down. I think this book will ultimately make a turn somewhere between 50 and 60,000. So I'm going to say 60,000. You know, I, I think that that's a pretty reasonable number. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes above that. I mean, it's sitting at 54 right now. It is a good looking 9.8, uh, but I'm going to say 60,000 for this book, especially knowing that that 9.8 sold just a week ago for 61. And those comic link sales, they don't get pulled into GPA. You know, I know people complain about that, but they just, you have to know about them. You have to have seen them. People are going to forget about them in a month, but <laughs> at least I am aware that that sale did happen on comic link. All right, next book. This one is interesting. And the reason I say that is because this 9.8, Feels a little uh, gifty to me. The grade, you know, <laughs> this does not feel like a 9.8 to me. And we'll do a little comparison of another 9.8. And, you know, I'll show you what I'm talking about with this one. But, hey, you know, there, and I know that really, like, again, like it really gets to people when you have this range and it feels like you, you shouldn't, but it just, it happens like half grades. And I'll call a 9.6 to a 9.8 a half grade. It can be, can be a little tricky. And that's just why you just have to be aware that that's the way it is. You know, some people will resubmit the same nine, six, 10 times to try to get a nine, eight, you know, and not trying to, I'm not, you know, like trying to like, you know, defend CGC here. I mean, to me, this type of book, like if that's the case, it should stay the nine, six. But when you have books that are kind of between grades, some people will just keep submitting to try to get them because the value jump can be so much more to that nine, eight or to, you know, whatever it is, there's certain grades that can have big jumps, but Let's take a look at this 9.8 here. This one's sitting at 27,600 right now. Let's go over and look at what 9.8s have been doing. And so if we look at the, the 9.8 of X-Men 94, and this is the first time you have the new X-Men in the X-Men title. You can see here, this book went a little crazy during the comic boom. You know, big sale here, $72,111. This is a book that when you look at the prices prior to the comic boom, the current prices still make me nervous. You see 2019, this book is going for, you know, around 15,000, you know, low 14.6, high 17, 2018, anywhere between nine and 18. I mean, we'll just say a $15,000 book last sale, even this year, 32,000, that's still double to me. That means there is a big potential for, for downside risk. And that's what I'm talking about here. When I say that I'm, I'm not saying the book is necessarily going to go down, but to me, it has a downside risk to it where I think it has a very high likelihood of going down more. And now I'm still going to predict what I think this book will go for. And this book, I mean, last sale just this year, you know, this was, looks like probably a heritage sale. Yep. 32,400. Let's see. This is four, three, five. I think these are different books. Yeah. Four, three, six. All right. Cause we're going to do a comparison of these two. That's where I'm going to talk about, you know, the, what I feel about this one as a, as a nine, eight, but I think, I think this book is still trending down. I think 30,000. And like I said, even at that, that feels risky to me. I think there's still a lot of downward potential at 30, but I think this one will likely sell around 30. It's sitting at 27.6 right now. Again, wouldn't surprise me if it goes higher than that, but I do feel like this has downside risk to it. All right. Now let's, let's check out why do I think this feels like kind of like a gift nine, eight. So if we zoom in on this book, I mean, it's got a nice, you know, nice cut up here. Let's start scrolling down. And we're going to see some, some flaws. I mean, staples look really good, but we've got immediately, looks like one spine tick right here. All right. Spine ticks are allowed in a nine, eight. And I think that's something a lot of people think that they aren't, and they are, 
you can generally have up to two. Uh, sometimes you see more, like in this case, because <laughs> we got another one right here. There's two. Then if we keep going down, three and four. This staple doesn't look awesome, but you know it doesn't. I'm not going to claim anything on that one. You know, and then we keep going down. Bottom corner looks fine along the bottom edge. This corner looks fine. And then if we go up to the top corner, uh, I don't think this is anything. I think this is just maybe on the, the ink. This corner looks real sharp. It's fine. So this looks like it has four spine ticks. Now, the other thing I did, because I just wanted to make sure these weren't something that was like on the the, the printing of the book uh, or like some some type of something that's expected on the cover. And so I went and looked at this 9-8. And so the, the nice thing here is that this 9-8 has a little bit of a miswrap. So we can easily see what should be here. And so look here, right below the staple here by, you know, this guy's hair, we have that spine tick. We don't have anything going on here. So to me, that's not part of the ink. That's, def that's definitely a spine tick. Then we, keep, whoop, then we keep going down here. We had this one right at his hair. And I was like, well, maybe that's part of the art. I don't know. Go check his hair. Nope, nothing there. Then we keep going down and then remember there were two more right below this. We go keep going down here and here's those two. Again, nothing there. So it at least appears, unless that's something where those are some type of printer defects or whatever, it appears that this book has four pretty obvious spine ticks, which to me is a nine six, like a solid nine six. No way it gets a nine eight. Like with that amazing Spider-Man number one, the 9.8, that one felt like it was like a nine seven, you know, maybe like a nine six five. Like you could say, you submit it. I think I said you submit it ten times, maybe three times, you get a nine eight, and seven times you get a nine six. You know, something like that. This one feels like you submit it ten times, you get a nine six, and you should keep getting nine sixes. Doesn't really feel like a nine eight to me. And so, I don't know. Clearly, it's not impacting the sales price because it's already at twenty seven thousand six hundred. And if you look at a nine six, last nine six sold for six thousand and eighty eight. And so that's why, you know, like people buy the grade, you know, it's like everybody likes to say, buy the book, not the grade. 99% of people buy the grade, or maybe I'm being a little too aggressive there. Maybe 90%, 90 to 95% of people buy the grade. And this is a perfect example. This to me is a solid nine, six and it got nine, eight and you know, this one appears now it's again, it's like that Hulk. It's really tough to tell. But this one appears to be a, a very solid 9.8. I mean, I remember I looked at this one. Like, it's got, like, this feels like printer stuff to me. Like, just, like, maybe a little ink lift there. But this one was a very solid 9.8. Like, this is a great-looking book. And you don't see any of those spine ticks. Again, they'd be tough to see on the white. But that one looks like a really solid 9.8. This one looks like a solid 9.6. It's got that 9.8 grade. And so it's going for around 30 grand. So, yeah, hey, this is what it is. All right, now let's go to this next one here because this will be interesting because this is a House of Secrets 92, 9.8. I imagine this is going to go for a lot less than what I would think a 9.8 of House of Secrets 92 would go for in a CGC. But we'll see ultimately when it sells. There's no way to know for sure. But go House of Secrets 92, Bernie Wrights and Cover, first appearance of Swamp Thing. And go down and check out the most recent 9.8. Again, this, I believe, was a heritage sale. Uh, 84,000. Here we go. Yep, 84,000 just in January. That January auction was nuts. This one is even more nuts. <laughs> but that January auction was like the craziest auction I had seen until this auction. I, I'm, I mean, I'm curious to see what's going to keep going on later this year or if, if everything was front loaded in the beginning of this year. Here we had a 9.8 that went for $84,000. This one is currently sitting at 26,400. Now, these books will get a lot of bids in the lives. I mean, just be aware of that. The prices before the lives don't really mean all that much. But let's close that out. So we had 84,000 for the last sale. 2021, 90,000, 2015, 14,000. So clearly, you know, we got a big jump in this book when we had the comic boom and very little correction, actually. I, I had thought that this one might even go for a little more because the House of Secrets is actually been pretty strong that house of secrets 92 was swamp thing i think everything with james gunn and all that with dc it's actually held up pretty well but you can see here it's still held up relatively well and if we look at a nine six last year thirty three thousand six hundred nine four fourteen thousand four hundred. 
So what do we think this one will go for? I think the first thing to do is take a close look at it because it's very possible if somebody gets this, they might try to cross grade it to CGC. And so if we take a look at this one, I mean, top corner looks really good. I think that this is probably just like maybe case, a case scratch or something. I don't think that's on the book. I mean, that staple looks really nice. I mean, I don't consider that any type of flaw there. It was a good looking staple. Nothing really jumps out so far. I mean, this staple looks really good. Again, nothing. I mean, like a soft corner down there in that, that uh, lower left corner, maybe a soft corner here. That might be something. I don't know for sure if that's some type of reflection. That could be something. That could be something to be aware of. You know, maybe that could knock it down to a 9.6 if you try to cross grade it. Because that, that could be a risk there. I mean, pretty good looking corner there. I mean, overall, and, and the back cover is like all white, so I'm not even going to try. Like the edges. I mean, we, we're not really going to see any flaws that might be there. So it looks good. There's that little thing maybe on the right edge. I, I feel like you maybe maybe there's a small risk that it would drop to a nine six if you tried to cross grade but it looks like a pretty solid nine eight question is how hesitant would i mean would cgc be hesitant to to give it a nine eight just because there are so few of these i mean if we look at the nine eight the census there's only three that's to me one of the big risks of trying to cross grade this the fact that there's only three they could maybe really look close at it so you i mean that's a big risk there if you are going to try to cross grade it that's why I think it's going to sell somewhere between a 9.6, like a CGC 9.6 and a 9.8, because I have no question that that would at least get a 9.6 from CGC. And so if we're saying a 9.6, I mean, if you look at, at this book, I mean, it depends on the, the grade. I mean, this one held up really well. Uh, it's come down a little bit here, but I mean, from, from 2023 averages, actually up a little bit. 23, 23 averages about the same, again, about the same, down maybe 10%, uh, down 5%. I mean, in general, this one's down a little more, maybe 15%. But I would say if it was a 9.8 going right now, I would probably price it around 80 for CGC. 9.6 right now, I'd probably price around 30. So the question is, where's it going to go between that 30 and 80? I, I think it's definitely going to go more than 30. I mean, where's it sitting right now? 26.4. And so I could see it going, like, what risk is someone going to take? Like 55,000? That's going to be my my guesstimate here with this one. 55,000 for this one. And, I mean, maybe somebody's willing to, to take a little bit more of a, a gamble on it and go up to around 70. Uh, I don't see it hitting, like, 80. Um, I don't see it getting this last number either. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to, my estimate's going to be 55, but I wouldn't be surprised if it hit like 70, but I'm going to say 55 on, uh, on this one. So still got some work to do. That's where I think it's going to go. All right. So now the next one here, another one of these interesting books with the whole nine, eight, nine, nine controversy that's out there because there are zero nine nines of this book right now. So a nine, nine or multiple nine nines coming on the census. Is that going to have an impact to those nine, eight prices? And if you also remember me talking about from the Comic Connect auction, there was a huge price difference between two nine eights of this book that sold in that same auction. One went for about 18,000, another one went for around 28,000, like a $10,000 price difference. One of them was off white to white, the lower one. The other one was white pages and had that like sticker on it you know, that's supposed to say it looks good for the grade when it's a nine eight, which I always kind of laugh at. Uh, cause it's supposed to look good when it's a nine, eight, but it's already sitting at 18, six. So it's already right around where that, that off white to white one went. I felt like that 28,000 price was very high. I, I would not have recommended that someone pay that. I think the downside risk at that price is substantial that you could take a pretty big loss over the next year or two. If you buy it at that price. And the reason I say that so again, we just we've got to look back at the history of this book. I mean, look, like just in January, twenty one thousand six hundred. Look at this book before the the boom. I mean, twenty twenty, this is a twelve thousand dollar book. Twenty nineteen, twelve thousand dollar book. I mean, you've got ranges there, but it's like twelve to fourteen, kind of in that price range, and we're up at twenty. Now, this is the type of book that you know it probably gradually trends up. It's a very popular book, popular character, but. 
I still think, I think this book is still trending down. Um, I, I think it'll, let's, let's check what that 21 six was, if it was a white pages copy or not. It was not, it was an off white to white. So the 21 six, cause this is the type of book where that's going to make a difference. We had a 24 here. This is also off white to white. So I'd put it probably around 23,000 where I think it's going to go. And again, I think you have a lot of downside risk at that price. So I'm going to say around 23,000. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if it went more. It is a great looking copy, a pretty nice wrap. It, it does have an, a miswrap here on the side, but it's on going on to the back. So the front looks pretty nice. I mean, it's a nice looking copy, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say 23,000 for this book. Uh, but again, wouldn't be surprised if it went for more. All right, we're going to skip the 9.6 on the, the Hulk 181. 9.8 giant size X-Men one. This is one where maybe we will see a difference. Now, this is off white to white. Not a white pages copy. Um, colors aren't super bright on this copy either. So take that for what it is. But let's take a look at giant size X-Men one. Because we had that... Nine eight white pages that sold for thirty four thousand five hundred. I think that was in Comic Connect. That was a really big sale for that book. One of the bigger sales we've had in a while. Because you can see here, last sale twenty two thousand two hundred, which I think was probably up yeah, January eleventh. Heritage. So off white to white, and this is a better looking book than this one. I mean, just flip between these two. That is so much brighter. And this is an example of one of those books. It's not. I don't think it's color fade. I, I I don't think that this is color fade. This is a book that you get a lot of variation in the print strike, the color strike of the book. And so this probably isn't print fade. This is just an amazing color strike for this one. This one is just on the weaker side. And so that's, to me, is definitely going to hurt that book. But even this one, this amazing color strike just went for 22200 So what does that mean for this one? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it went for like 19 to 20. I mean, right now it's sitting at 9,900. I wouldn't be surprised if it went for 19 to 20. I mean, again, we look back at what this book was prior to the comic boom, kind of like an 11 to $12,000 book. 19 to 20 doesn't seem that unreasonable. I, I think that it could still have some downside risk even at that. I mean, if you kind of look at that trend of this book, it feels like it could still go down more. But just based on this color strike, I mean, again, people, a lot of people, they'll just buy the grade, right? But I think, I think 19 to 20 on, on this one. All right, let's keep going down. Now getting into some, some DC two here, we've got Batman number 232. Uh, so this is the first appearance of Ra's al Ghul. Cool cover. You know, this one, this is a book that got pretty crazy during the comic boom. So we got Batman number 232 and I don't know how many nine eights are. I think there are quite a few nine eights actually of this book. Let's take a look. Yeah, so there's 69 nine eights, not over the hundred threshold that I mentioned in a prior video where I said there's at least a hundred nine eights. I'd be a little nervous about it that I feel like your likelihood of nine nines popping up is, is quite a bit higher. But here at a nine eight, I mean, look at this. Look at this huge fluctuation. Prior to the comic boom, this was like a four to five thousand dollar book hit a peak sale of 22,000 in the same year, had a $7,700 sale the next year, 19,000 down to 7,000. Then in 2024, we had 12,000. I mean, this book just does not know what it wants to do. And so let's take a close look at this one. This is a white pages copy. I wouldn't be surprised if that was part of that fluctuation, but still like that's wild, like a wild price fluctuation on that one. So nine, eight sitting at 5,640. I mean, I would be likely expecting somewhere on the lower range. I mean, probably eight to 9,000, somewhere in that range. I mean, just those wild swings, it's really tough to tell. Um, but let's take a close look at this one. I mean, kind of looks, I don't know if that's a spine tick. I mean, it's sometimes it's hard to tell if that's actually like a production issue or a spine tick, but might be. This definitely is. I mean, when it's right at the staple there, you know, you know, that's a spine tick. Some something light going on there. I mean, that's the thing. Like, are all these spine ticks? I hope not, because otherwise, that's a lot of them. I mean, it's tough. It's tough with this book. Like, this book has some because of this green ink. It, it kind of seems to do some weird things on that spine. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't feel like a super solid nine eight. Um, 
It depends. I mean, I'd have to go find another one and do some comparisons and see if that's like standard marks on this book or if these are or if these are actually spine ticks or if that's part of the production print. Hard to say for sure. Um, yeah, hard to say for sure. But I still think eight to nine thousand. I think eight to nine thousand is where this book is likely going to go. But I mean, it's tough to say. Like, I mean, just just based on this, <laughs> that's just so crazy. Like this, these price swings. Um, but I'm going to go eight to nine thousand, somewhere in the middle of the last couple sales. All right. Now I've got some books that these have corrected quite a bit. Got a Tomb of Dracula number ten and a nine point eight. I think this one hit like. 50,000 or something like that. Some crazy huge number. Uh, but let's check it out. We'll see. So we've got Tomb of Dracula, number 10, 9.8, 48,000. Yeah, it was pretty close. <laughs> I mean, peak sale, 48,000. Prior to the comic boom, like a six to $7,000 book. I mean, last year, as low as 28.8. It looks like it's it's slowing down on its downtrend, but I wouldn't trust that. I could see this one taking a big drop. Uh, let's see, where's, where's it at right now? So it's at 5,520. Um, I mean, so this book has been cut in half since this number, 12,350 to 6,600 for 9.6. And look at a 9.4, same thing, 51 down to 24, 9.2, 44 down to 25. I mean, this book is getting cut in half from those 2022 averages. I mean, like 17, 18,000 wouldn't shock me. I, I think it's maybe unlikely it'll take that big of a gap down. That That's tough to happen. Like just psychologically, I think people have a hard time allowing books to gap down that much. They just, they think they're getting a deal, even though the reality is they're just catching a falling knife with these types of prices when it's jumped up that much in this short a period of time. But like 17,000 wouldn't really surprise me. 17 to 18,000 really would not surprise me for this book. It'll be interesting to see. I'll definitely be be checking back on some of these. Then this one too. Whew, man, <laughs> big correction on this book. Werewolf by Night, number 32, first appearance of Moon Knight. This book also went crazy during the, the comic boom. Now, this one has a very low census count for that 9-8. That uh, let's check out what it is. I can't remember exactly, but I know it is a pretty low census count. Yeah, so just 20. So only 29 eights for this book. There are not a lot of them. And so they also, it means they don't sell very often. In 2022, we had a $42,000 sale, but we also had a $70,000 sale. I mean, that's crazy. Like, look at this. This was 15,000 back in 2016, but then you didn't have any sales for four years. This probably, let's see when this actually happened. This, so this was March. That was... That was before the comic boom, but it was Moon Knight had started to get the hype though because of the show. So that could have been driving that one up. Ah, man, I could see this one still dropping quite a bit. Off white pages. This one's tough. I could see it dropping into the 20s. I, I could see this book going like 25 to 27. But man, it, it is really low right now. Let's take a look at this one. I mean, definitely a soft corner up there. I mean, this is a book that's going to show flaws generally. So far, so good. I mean, that is a good looking spine on this book. Wow. I mean, those staples are perfect. And just like a soft corner down there. That corner looks really good. It, I mean, this is a good looking copy. I would have put this thing into a new slab, just help it look a little bit better. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is a pretty old slab. Let's see when this one was graded. So this one was graded in 2015. So nine year old slab, no graders. No, it's not surprised <laughs> for a, for a nine, eight, but I mean, this, this is a solid nine, eight. Like it's, it's definitely, it doesn't meet that criteria to me of what would be a nine, nine. Cause it's got these soft corners up here and generally like they're supposed to have really great bindery cuts for nine nines. So I don't see it getting like a nine, nine candidate, you know, but this is a really, really nice 9.8. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's off white pages, but gosh, like who cares? <laughs> like that's a good looking nine, eight. 
I I think I mean it might go lower because I feel like the, the show you know wasn't received all that well but 25 to 27 uh, that's what I'm going to say with this one 25 to 27 for Moon Knight or sorry for Werewolf by Night number 32 first appearance of Moon Knight all right keep scrolling down here we're going to skip best you know we got a Tomb of Dracula here let's look at another DC here so this one's it's kind of like an interesting one it's generally called the first silver age appearance of two-face even though it's in the bronze age it's 1971 you know like you can see it up here for silver age appearance of two-face it's in the bronze age it's just it's weird i don't know why it's like that but batman 234 and it's a neil adams cover however i i don't like this cover <laughs> I, I mean like the giant face i just there's this cover does not appeal to me at all uh, there's nothing I really care for about that cover, but it is that first appearance, the, you know, first Bronze Age, whatever you want to call it, appearance. We had a 9.8, I mean, actually set a record in late 2023. That's crazy. You don't have that happen very often. 7,710 white pages. Well, actually, we don't know what this one was, but yeah, actual record for that book in late 2023. That's wild. Okay, so... <sighs> I don't think that this one's going to set that record again. I would say that that I wouldn't be surprised if it went for like 6,800. Where's it at right now? Is that 4,680? I mean, 6,800, 7,000, somewhere in that range. I mean, it's a white pages copy. It's, it is that first appearance. I mean, I can just, this corner looks incredible up there. That's a sharp corner. Let's take, I mean, a little bit, a little bit of softness on that top edge. Pretty nice cut there. This is, you know, that white. So it's really tough to tell if these are actually spine ticks or just some issue with the print. Um, nothing's really going to jump out unless it's a really bad spine tick. Again, it's hard to tell if that's like a print issue or, or what. Same with those. I don't know. Uh, that's probably the staple. I'm guessing those are the staple holes. It's really tough to tell on this image. But yeah, these... It's the same thing with that that other Batman, you know, the Batman 232. It's hard to tell if those are actual like printer defects or if they are flaws on the book. That's that looks like kind of a soft corner. I mean, this one it's probably like a 97. <laughs> but regardless, you know, I think it's probably like a 97. I don't know if you're getting a 98 every time you submit this book. Um, but yeah, I mean somewhere between 6800 and 7000 seems pretty reasonable, but I mean it had had some lower sales there earlier last year. Let's check out this one. Was this a white pages? Yeah, it was. I wonder if it's the same book. Let's see. So, oh, it might be. 14796. Uh, 14793. It's not. It's not the same book. All right. So not the same book. But um, but yeah. Batman 234. Probably somewhere around 7,000. All right. Let's keep scrolling down here. Let's talk about this book here real quick. X-Men number 101. This has, <laughs> has one of those stickers I was making fun of. The CVA type stickers, these things that's like, oh, it looks good for a 9.8. It's like, yeah, it's a 9.8. Uh, you know, I, I don't understand the purpose of that. But this book has been holding up surprisingly well. Like everything else, it's come down, but... It has been pretty stable for quite a while, right around that $5,000 mark is where this book has been pretty consistently selling. So, I mean, this, I mean, look at this, like this is from 2021 until now. I mean, with the fluctuations and everything, it's still at kind of like around its lows from the comic boom period and still well above where it was. Now, I definitely had these this earlier peak here. This is probably somewhere around that X-Men movie, you know, with, with Phoenix. But if you look at the general kind of trend, it's like touchdown on this, this bottom point here. I mean, it feels like it should be around a $4,500 book, somewhere in that range. And, you know, last sale, last couple sales, 44, 46, 48. Let's see what, the, where's it at right now? This one's at 42, those CVA stickers. Even though I can make fun of them, people pay more for them. I mean, it just it just happens. Uh, so I think that this one will probably sell around five, but I wouldn't be surprised if it actually went a little bit more than that, partially because of that sticker. <laughs> uh, I think I'd probably value this book right now around 4,500, but I think that this one will probably sell somewhere around 5,000. But I mean, if it's, let's check this out. Let's see how good. I mean, that's a nice cut there on the top there. 
maybe this is a nine, nine candidate, you know, I don't know. I mean, staples look pretty good. It's hard to tell if these are spine ticks or not. That looks like a definite spine tick. Um, and that staple looks pretty good. And that bottom cut looks really nice too. I mean, I don't really, maybe it's a nine, nine contender. I don't know. Maybe somebody will pay up for this one. You know, thinking that the 9-9 pre-screen is... That's a little bit of a soft corner there. But, I mean, hey, we saw that Giants says X-Men 1, that upper right corner. It didn't look great. So maybe maybe that's what we'll see with something like this. You know, this is like a really strong-looking 9-8, especially with those bindery cuts. Who knows? Maybe people will pay up for it, prepping for that 9-9 pre-screen. You know, think of sending this one in for that pre-screen. I mean... Because I don't know if a 9.9 exists for this book. Let's see. Yeah, there's no 9.9s. But look at this number. 193 9.8s. I bet you there are some 9.9s hiding in those 9.8 cases. That might be one of them. Oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, like, this is where I'm saying, like, 193 in mid-Bronze Age. Like, 1976? I wouldn't be surprised if there's like five to 10, five to 10, nine, nine sitting in, in those nine, eight cases. And how much, how much might that go for? You know, I mean, I often see like anywhere from 10 to 20 X for a nine, nine over a nine, eight, you know, would you take that gamble? You know, you pick this one up for 5,000, you wait for that nine, nine pre-screen, you send this thing in and maybe you make 50 to a hundred thousand dollars off the flip. I mean, it doesn't seem like such a bad, uh, doesn't seem like such a bad play. <laughs> so I, I bet that's crossing people's minds now. I, I really do. I bet that's crossing people's minds now where they're going to like really closely inspect some of these books. Let's see what the back looks like. Cause there's something weird going on in the top there. And it just looks like maybe it's paper cut or something. I mean, yeah. I mean, look at that corner up there. It looks good. Oh man. Yeah. I think this is a nine, nine contender. <laughs> oh man. I wonder, I wonder if this one's going to get bit up just because of that. Like, is this a nine, nine contender X-Men one Oh one. And then this could be a 50 to a hundred thousand dollar book. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if this book sold for a hundred grand, maybe even more. If it was this, the first one, like the first one that hits that nine, nine number. Oh man, it's gonna be interesting to see. Interesting to see how that all plays out. But all right, it's the last one I'm gonna talk about here. I feel like that's a good place to end on on this one. You know, do we have a nine nine hiding in this nine eight case? I don't know. Maybe it's a pretty good looking book. But if you enjoyed this video, if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell, all that kind of stuff. This auction's coming up. There's some really cool books in this auction. I'm looking forward to seeing where these books go. Some of those big golden age books, as well as silver bronze, all that kind of thing. If you'd like to see more videos like this, I got more videos over here. I've got the subscription button right here, and I will see you in the next video.